Okay, um, good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's live coaching um, on FX Street. I'm your, uh, I'm your coach today, uh, my name is Jack. I've been a uh, trader for around seven years professionally at institutions. I've also worked as an analyst um, near the start of my career as well. So I uh, pretty much um, come from the proprietary uh, realm, but I have moved into trading hedge fund. Um, and I've traded pretty much every asset class um, that you can probably um, think of anything from uh, agriculturals all the way to interest rate futures. In today's session, we are going to look at the impact of um, discretion. And I will answer that question for you in a second, FX Boyd. Um, we are just going to start with a risk um, disclaimer, and then obviously we will crack on. And I'll happily answer that question for you in a second, guys. So spread better in FX and CFD trading. Uh, can carry a high level of risk to your capital. It can result in losses that may affect your initial deposit. Trading of these products may not be suitable for everyone, so please ensure that you understand the risk associated with trading. Information and comments provided herein under no circumstance are to be considered an offer or solicitation to invest, and all information provided is believed accurate at the time of production. That is about 3 o'clock GMT on the 11th of March 2014. Um, as well as this, guys, um, do, 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 just bear with me. Get rid of that. There we go. Okay, nothing herein should be construed as investment advice. In fact, information provided within this room is the personal opinion of the moderator, not for the and FX Street. And the content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice. For the and FX Street accepts no liability for the content of a comment made during the session. Um, in response to your question, um, basically, um, it's to do with when a market gaps. Um, you know, we know that currency markets are open 24 hours a day, five days a week. But just you need to also bear in mind um, that basically um, when those markets are closed, if a news event um, occurs, what will happen is sometimes a market will gap. And if you have a position on and you have a stop loss in place, it will get you out at the nearest possible price. So if the market gaps up, obviously it can um, it can affect your, your profit and loss there. So it's something to always be aware of when you are trading. OK, guys, so what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to look at discretion versus mechanical trading. OK, it's one of the pivotal uh, points when it comes to any discussion that I have regarding trading. Um, do you guys know the difference, obviously, between discretionary, uh, discretionary and mechanical trading? Maybe someone can help uh, help us out there. What is the difference between the two guys? And in my experience, um, it's a very well-known quote from a very well-known trader that I know. Uh, use of discretionary trading is commonly accepted as the difference between good trader and a great trader. And basically, guys, what it is, is it's using um, the bigger picture. It's using um, sort of a bit of flexibility when it comes to trading. And when I first started trading, you know, I, I was asking the question, you yeah, know, why don't I just trade with a very mechanical system to avoid having to actually sit at the screen to myself. What's the point in me trading? Now, it is important to understand that mechanical systems are very, very good. I myself have a number of mechanical systems and they are pretty much uh, something that hundreds, thousands of traders use. But in my own opinion and with my own experience and with a lot of traders that I discuss uh, this point with, trading is never as simple as giving someone just a strategy to trade with. OK, um, basically, um, mechanical systems are very linear. They're very one sided, whereas bringing in a level of discretion can actually help you. It can help you to avoid certain trades. It can help you to use a little bit of um, sort of uh, liberalism when it comes to trading certain position sizes. And as I develop as a trader, I've learned a lot about fundamentals. I've learned a lot about how markets pay um, at some prices. And it got me thinking about you know, how I can bring discretion into my own system. And so over the last few years, I've got a number of mechanical systems, but I've also always tried to use discretionary trading because, you know, knowing the bigger picture in the market, knowing um, that, you know, I might want to risk a little bit more here or a little bit less uh, here is very, very important. It's helped me to obviously um, improve profitability. So if we start by having a little look at the difference, guys, uh, you know, discretionary traders, as I said, they'll use fundamentals as well as technical analysis. OK, that's the big, big, big difference. Mechanical traders rely solely on fixed rules that are employed, regardless of fundamental sentiment. And as we know, guys, you know, technical setups are very, very good for trading. But when it comes to um, really moving the market, fundamental analysis, um, how markets perceive um, themselves um, looking into the future, that's what really moves markets. OK, for example, we saw the European Central Bank um, on Thursday of last week. And they were quite hawkish in what they said. And by hawkish, I mean that they um, did not allude. They did not mention anything about an interest rate cut and the market 
basically it rallied higher. If we actually have a little look on a, a price chart, we can see that over the last few days, you know, the euro has had a big, big, big move higher. OK, now, mechanical systems would have seen potential, you know, if you trade in a reversal system where you're looking for the market to sort of move up and then move back. They would have been looking to get into these trades, a um, bit like some of the trend continuation systems when the market has a pullback would also do the same, you know, when we see some choppy trading. Whereas a discretionary trader would have seen that, you know, the euro, um, in essence, is very much um, fundamentally driven at the moment and use discretion when they trade. OK, and that's the whole point of um, being a discretionary trader, guys. Basically, it's about using um, independence. OK, um, it is a lot harder to trade as a discretionary trader. It takes longer to develop. We'll look at that in a second. But basically, the two the two things we need to look at price action are key. OK, they're key um, at all levels. OK, it is really, really important. And as well as that, guys, news and different market environments um, are also important. Mechanical traders, on the other hand, and there's a lot of positivity uh, surrounding mechanical trading systems. It relies solely on fixed rules. OK, if if uh, market does this, I will buy. If market does that, I will sell. If market does something else, I will obviously uh, maybe cut out some of my position. OK, and mechanical traders remain committed even against market sentiment. OK, however, the big, big thing with mechanical trading, guys, is they're not affected by psychological aspects of trading. So can anyone tell me what we mean by psychological aspects of trading? Um, maybe some of you have experience of this, guys. Forex girl says emotions. Does anyone disagree with her? Uh, does everyone sort of agree? OK, in that case, I take it that everyone does agree. And you're absolutely right. Um, emotions, you know, a uh, fear of putting a trade on, a fear of when a trade is going against you. You know, a lot of traders will work for that position. And mechanical systems, obviously, you don't have to worry about any of that because you are following the rules of your system. And there is no room for sort of um, broadening those rules. You do you do nothing but follow those rules. And so that is a very, very big positive um, when it comes to mechanical um, trading. If we have a little look at advantage of discretion, uh, we can see quite clearly here, you know, um, what I found in my experience is discretionary traders will generally um, have a longer shelf life than a mechanical strategy. And what I mean by that, guys, is um, how many of you have actually looked at algorithmic trading systems and mechanical trading systems? Have any of you done any sort of analysis of them? Joe says never. Well, um, basically, guys, and again, it, it's kind of a personal viewpoint. But as I say, I have used a lot of experience. I've got a little bit of evidence. Um, you know, done a little bit of a study. But generally, you will find that um, EAs, you know, they have a shelf life before they need to be adapted. Um, there's a very, very good example that we're going to use. It's the double SAR strategy. Um, back in 2008, it was an absolutely phenomenal system, guys. OK, it was absolutely fantastic. But what you find is as market conditions change and markets begin to range a little bit or maybe they're a bit more choppy, that system doesn't perform so well. It has to be changed. Whereas a discretionary trader will look at that basic system and they will be able to trade the same basic rules, but they will have a little bit of, as I say, flexibility with those rules. OK, basically, once you find a setup, you decide what to do, whereas a mechanical trader just follows the setups itself. And it's very important to remember, you know, that every trader who trades discretionary systems, they still need to follow certain rules. Golf, OK, they have to follow things such as your size of position. You know, there's generally the two percent rule that you never risk more than two percent. And it's important that certain conditions are met before you even think about putting the trade on. OK, for example, you have to have your setup rules, you have to have your reason for entry and so on and so forth. So it's very, very important that we do remember that when we are looking at um, discretionary trading. It's not that they don't have rules in the system. They have very stringent rules, but you do have a little bit of flexibility. OK, now, um, obviously, they are the advantages and um, the disadvantages of discretion is it takes a lot longer. How long have you guys been trading for? Intuition, absolutely, for its girl. Sometimes it doesn't hurt. How long has everyone been trading for? Milan, how long have you been? Uh, Joe's been trading for five years. And have you found, um, you know, Milan's been trading half a year. Um, have you found that you use a bit of discretion with your system, um, Joe? Or do you generally? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and do you find it more successful than just using a purely mechanical system all of the time? Or do you find that maybe the psychological aspects of things? Yeah, it's the same with me. OK, discretion for me is, um, you know, 
is is very important. I can see that FX Boyke has asked if you mix the two, uh, what percentage do you use for each? Um, in terms of how much I trade um, discretionary and, and mechanically, well, I would say that I probably trade mechanically about 20% of the time. Um, very, very low ratios for me. But I know guys who trade 99% mechanical strategies, and they are very, very, very good traders. And again, yes, it depends on the uh, uh, circumstance and, and, and what you're trading. But we can see Forex go, yeah, especially when, when markets are crazy, as, as Forex girl so lovely, uh, lovely puts it, um, as he puts it, yeah, yeah, it's very, very hard to trade mechanically because you see markets moving up and down. Um, when markets are ranging, if you've got a breakout strategy, you know, using a mechanical system, you're going to get lots and lots of um, setups. And it's very important this. We will actually go into this in a second. But the big disadvantage of discretion is psychological barriers. I can't tell you the amount of traders I've seen in my career who basically will, um, you know, average into a position because it goes against them. They're scared of taking a loss. They cut out winning trades um, too early because they monetize. Um, they will trade more than they should because they have an ego or because they're greedy. And it's, you know, this is something that does affect the discretionary trader, but it's about obviously being able to overcome that. And maybe in our next session, we can look at some of the psychological aspects there and some of the solutions that come um, when it comes to psychology. So um, basically, guys, that's the advantage, in my opinion, of discretionary trading and the disadvantages. Now, um, basically, a while ago, I thought to myself it would be quite important to see the effects of this. Now, I don't ever teach something. I won't ever talk about something if I don't have something to back it up with. And what I mean by this is um, a while ago, um, what I actually did is I did a bit of a study. OK, and this study um, basically just shows you how mechanical um, strategies and discretion affect my trading. Now, it's not going to be the same for everyone. And what I did is very, very simple. OK, I took three very basic trading strategies that I use. And I traded them with a very small account, just a 100 euro account. OK, and I was looking to see um, how sort of much um, the results would be effective if I just put on three algorithmic trading systems that I have or I actually traded them myself. OK, now um, these strategies that I use were the double star strategy, a very basic uh, decision support tool. It was a custom RSI bounce, which um, is basically a contrarian strategy where you're looking to take a bounce off certain levels using accelerator and using a couple of other um, um, indicators, as well as obviously the discretion. And then obviously uh, the third one, we need a third one, it should be BI. So I gave it a good spread. I didn't just trade one mechanical strategy, I traded three mechanical strategies. And basically you can see they have different results. Okay, the first one, this is purely from a mechanical um, viewpoint, and this is done with a back test because obviously I traded mine live, I'll show you the results in a second. Um, but basically, how I looked at it was I'll, I'll back test them mechanically once I've, I've got my results up. But obviously, we like to start with with the uh, with the back test first and then we can move on to my results, which is sort of a little bit more exciting, hopefully, for everyone. But basically, what I found is this. OK, the double star strategy, the RSI bounce strategy, they had mixed results. You can see that one of the uh, results you can see um, basically lost 20 euros. Now, what I had for all of these uh, results and we can um, we can see quite clearly is a very low return rate. We can see less than 50 percent. OK, we can see that two of the three uh, strategies actually had a drawdown. We can see minus 20 euros here. We can see about minus uh, eight euros here, but we can see that we made 29 euros 70. OK, so overall, the uh, three strategies together as a mechanical back test would have performed pretty much um, flat on the on the period. OK, it was over a period of a, of a, of a few months. OK, um, we can see that drawdown was pretty high. We can see, you know, expected payoff was quite low. And we can see, you know, 27 percent, 70 percent maximum drawdown and 15 percent maximum drawdown here. But what we can also see, and this is something we'll analyze in a second, is that the profitable trades were much, much higher than the loss trades and it gave us a really really good risk to reward ratio an average of two to one here an average of maybe sort of four and a half to one here and um on this one i actually didn't pop it up but it was similar to sort of the two to one factor okay and this is the mechanical uh results okay basically if you look at these in more detail i had time filters okay so there were only certain points of the day that i would trade because as we know that table um and euro which um were the two that I looked at, we've, we've done this on the euro, are very, very busy during the day, as we know. 
okay and basically um things um are more liquid during the day so i try to filter in some of that discretion with this mechanical system by saying you know after 5 p.m london time i won't look to take any trades with VVA. okay i also had some other things um in there as well i took um basically no trades over news okay so whenever there was a big news event in the us or in the uk or in europe i did not take any of those uh, trades over the period okay so there were some filters to try and give us um you know um a, a hint of discretion okay and it didn't really work it, it appeared flat now if we move on to the actual results that i've got and again you know i do have a statement of this um if people are looking you can see that basically um over the course of the same period using discretion um and this is actually just a screenshot of the, the statement 56 euros total net profit okay 100 percent um accurate guys you can see these results in the trading room for BMO. Basically, 56 euros net profit in the same period. We can see straight away profitable trades. Instead of that sort of average of 25%, up to 51%. Okay. Our largest profit trade, though, quite interesting, um, was much, much less. Okay. We could see that instead of that 36 euros, which was the biggest trade, we actually only made 14 euros. And our biggest loss trade was actually a little bit bigger than our mechanical system and this guys highlights perfectly the psychological aspect of, of um, trading and this is why uh, discretionary systems um, can be very difficult to get used to we'll talk about that again in a second you'll also notice guys that there were a lot less trades okay 320 as opposed to um, we had 72 trades here 255 puts us up to around 330 and then you know so we had over 400 trades so we took a lot less trades okay but i still traded a lot now the rules of my system were very very simple with discretion i would trade around news events but only if it supported the overall sort of trend of the system okay i would never go against market sentiment and I would also use something called decision support tools, guys, um, when I made my uh, trades, you know, and these were things like price action, order flow. OK, I would look at things as simple as candlestick analysis um, to anything to level two data where I'm looking at to see if someone's iceberg in an order. Do you all know what an iceberg um, is, guys? Or do you know what sort of level two data is? Basically, it's order flow. And, you know, I'd have a look to see what was going on in the market. I'd use things like support and resistance levels and I would use time of day. Now, unlike the mechanical strategy that I employed, where I would not trade after 5 p.m., if there was an event that I could trade, for example, FOMC, U.S. interest rates, or if, for example, there was a reason to trade because of the overall sentiment in the market, I actually would take the trade on. And we can see that obviously my percentage of profitable trade was higher. And the reason it was higher is because I took less trades and I took um, probably uh, slightly more risk on the high conviction trades as opposed to my mechanical systems. OK. And um, as I've said already, we had much lower trades. OK. Uh, trade numbers. OK. So straight away, guys, there are results there. And um, again, um, they are available for everyone to see. This was just a little study that I did myself. OK, so, you know, we can already see how, in my opinion, um, and again, you know, I'm not saying mechanical strategies are bad. Mechanical strategies are very, very good. But in my opinion, discretion can make those strategies a lot, lot better. And you see that FX Boyke said, what would you call trade what you see? What do you mean there, FX Boyke? Maybe you could just highlight things a little bit more for me. Um, but basically, guys, if we go back to the, uh, maybe you could just highlight what you mean by that FX Boyke a little bit, and I'll happily come back to you. Um, so, guys, we can already see, okay, straight away, we've gone from having a system that is flat to a system that is profitable. Now, again, it's not a perfect study, guys. I'm not saying it's a perfect study. But pretty much it highlights my point that discretionary trading for me um, in particular is something that helps me to improve my results. OK, we can see that we actually had starting with, you know, um, just 50 euros. We actually made 50 percent in I think it was around a four or five month period. OK, so discretionary trading, very, very important. Now, what I would like to talk about. Um, are the results a little bit and then we're going to talk about what we can actually use to actually trade with discretion so if we actually pop on to the results you can find um basically what we have here is we can see drawdown was much much lower god we know drawdown was much much lower because um i would get out of trades manually rather than hold them all the way back okay for example if um you know if 
I saw um, a, a reversal signal, uh, maybe from an oscillator. Maybe I saw uh, we've broken a trend line. Maybe, you know, a piece of news has come out. I would exit out of the trend. OK, we can see that the drawdown was lower. We had as much as 69 percent drawdown, whereas in uh, our mechanical system, uh, our discretionary system, it was 23 percent. Whereas our average drawdown here, you can see 27 percent, 69 and 27. So it's around 40 percent. OK. We also saw less trade, okay, and that's generally a big, big factor of discretionary trading. You trade less. Now, it's not necessarily a good thing, but it's not necessarily a bad thing either, because generally um, you're avoiding the trades that, you know, may not have high conviction. We can see that the win to loss ratio was higher, and um, as a negative, we can see we had smaller win uh, trades in terms of how much we make. Okay, mechanical strategies, we saw a high drawdown. There are a lot more trades, which is always good for your broker, not necessarily good for the trader. We saw a much lower win to loss ratio. However, we did see an absolutely huge higher winning total per trade. If we scroll back, biggest winner, okay, we can see 14, 15. Okay, here we can see the biggest winner using the same strategies was actually this one here, 36 euros. Uh, okay, guys, and we can see we have a pretty good model in quality. 90% is sort of what we're looking for when we back test. So there are advantages, there are disadvantages. Um, so what I'd like to do now, um, so Epic Boyke uh, uses pattern support and resistance candles, etc. Absolutely, this is exactly what we like to use. Um, but I also bring in some other things as well. And we're going to talk about how we can trade with discretion now. And then we're going to have a little bit of a game at the uh, sort of towards the end of the session. OK, so um, if we pop on now, OK. Um, I like to call them support tools, okay? And in my opinion, they're key to maximizing returns, okay? Now, how I like to think of these support tools is very, very simple. I have the rules of my system, okay? And in this example here, we can see that we have a double SAR system, okay? And it's very, very simple. The green SAR is our market direction, and the orange SAR tells us when we should buy and sell. And very, very simply put, you know, when this SAR is below market, we're looking to get long. So we're only looking at new trades when the SAR flips underneath price and gives us a buy signal. OK, likewise, when the SAR is above market, the green SAR, that tells us we should only be looking for short trades and we ignore any periods when the SAR is obviously below market. OK, so we have very, very fixed rules um, already with this particular basic strategy. OK, but your additional rules are something that um, are not fixed in stone. They are something where you will use a level of discretion. So, for example, uh, fundamental analysis. It's the big, big, big one, guys. How many of you actually trade news or how many of you would say that you have a good understanding of the market? So basically, this are you have certain mechanical um, rules. So you have the rule for this tells you when to get into the trade. It also tells you how you control your stop loss. But the flexibility comes with whether you actually want to enter that trade when it occurs, um, FX girl. So, you know, in this example, you know, you might get a buy signal here. We get one here. OK, but you might say to yourself, I'm not actually going to enter that trade because I can see RSI is overbought, volume is very, very low. It's, it's, you know, maybe not a good time of day. Um, so you think to yourself, maybe I'll, I'll risk a little bit less. You have a bit of flexibility. You think, oh, maybe I'll risk a little bit less instead of 2%, I'll risk 1%. Um, you know, and you have to try and gauge what is a sensible trade. And the, the tools that I use for this are very, very simple. They are basically fundamental analysis. OK, if the news tells me to trade um, one way or another, OK, I will trade one way or another. OK, so, for example, when we have a little look at the chart now, OK, and we go back to that euro dollar on the uh, daily chart. OK, on Thursday, we can see that we had a very, very, very uh, bullish day. And I'll just mark a red candle there and we'll go on to the five minute chart and we'll try and find that line on the chart so that we can actually see what happened. OK, so on this day here, we can see that we actually had ECB. Now, we were quite lucky in the sense that our mechanical strategy actually told us to get long. But say um, the second system I was trading, the RSI bounce, you know, when we're looking for a real, real drive up. OK, that would have told me to enter into a short trade probably around here. Now, if I followed the mechanical rules and entered the short trade, OK, and say, um, you know, we go eight pips inside. Great. But at the same time, after that occurs, we actually rally another 60 pips. So when sentiment 
tells you not to trade a certain direction, okay, I generally will not do it. How do you make the right decisions at those moments? How do you uh, use initiative decisions and not resort to impulsive decisions, says Darren Littlewood? Um, it's not easy. This is a big, big danger of discretionary trading. Um, you know, um, absolutely, it's a big psychological issue that, that, that there is, Darren. And um, basically, you know, it's things like a fear of losing. It's uh, uh, monetizing, as I've said, monetizing your trades when they go a little bit on site and getting out of the trade, which is exactly what happened in those results that I show you there. Biggest winner was 15 euros. Biggest winner with a mechanical strategy, 36 euros. But you can actually train yourself to avoid these issues and it is a more in-depth psychological aspect um, of, of trading as a whole so maybe in our next session we can actually look at how we can avoid curfew and avoiding the fear and so on and so forth but it's very very much not easy but you just have to try and set yourself certain rules um, but at the same time allow yourself a level of flexibility it's it, it's not easy to do it's kind of having the best of both worlds unfortunately okay so fundamental is very very important this is probably for me the most important thing okay i will try and find the fundamentals in the morning before i actually trade we'll talk about these in a second um you know as well as this um you know very simple things time time of day very important for me okay i'm more likely to risk a lot less on a trade after 9.30, um, unless there's a news event or there's something that I see that gives me a good setup. OK, a mechanical strategy will trade or not trade or it will trade X amount if you program it that way. OK, or you trade it that way yourself. OK, however, you know, at some point you will want to trade more um, based on, on the setups that you have. Very, very simple ones. OK, news and time. Uh, oscillators are another one. Again, oscillators. Everyone thinks that oscillators are mechanical. They're actually not. You can use them for discretion, OK? Um, things like price action, we've talked about this, and volume. Volume is always a good thing. So let's have a little look at these and let's have a little look at how we can actually um, take advantage of this, shall we? I've got a set up uh, from an example. It's an example, actually, from um, last week, OK? And it's actually in cable. OK, so basically, you can see that we have our double star strategy um, on the chart here, OK? Um, basically... Um, rules of the strategy are that as long as the SAR is below market, every time we get a buy signal, i.e. every time the SAR flips from top to bottom of the market, OK, we look to enter a trade. Our stop loss is placed on the SAR and it trails this orange SAR here, this signal SAR. Very, very simple strategy. OK, it's more of a decision support tool, uh, but it is a very well-known strategy that a lot of traders do use. OK, we also see that we have an RSI, very good oscillator. OK, I always use this. I use it to find things like divergence in a market. I look, I look for it for finding true ceilings and true floors, which I'll talk about in a second. And then we also have volumes, which are always important. OK, volume is like the nuts and bolts. They are like the nuts and bolts of a car. OK, it tells you what's going on under market. So basically, we can see that using the SAR strategy, Guys, in our next slide, OK, very, very simple. OK, we are given a buy signal and this orange dot. We can see that right here. OK, basically our green dots are below market. And as we can see, our orange dot is below market. OK, so ordinarily speaking, if you were using a mechanical strategy, you would actually be looking to trade with a long position. You'd look to open into your trade on this red candle after the SAR is broken. OK, and you'd obviously be trailing your stop loss. OK, however, um, areas of discretion that you can use, um, as I've said, you know, very easy support and resistance. Have a little look at support and resistance guide. OK, look to see if um, there are any levels on the chart which, um, you know, might give us a resistance. And one of the easy ways to do things um, when I use discretion in my trading is I actually grade my levels. OK, I grade them red. Um, but in pretty much red, orange and green or red, purple and green. And what I do is the red are the most important. And generally speaking, um, when it looks like I get a trade set up with, for, for example, this double SAR strategy, I have to see, um, you know, a very, very um, convincing break of that level. And generally, instead of just entering into the trade, I'll enter into a retest as long as things like volume and RSI dictate to me. So basically, in this example, we can see that we had, you know, a nice resistance level. So for me, we can see, you know, 
we're on a big, big daily level. So rather than enter the trade like the mechanical style would, and again, you know, if it had gone on side, I would have probably taken less of the trade because I'm entering maybe a bit higher. We can see that, you know, what I would like to do using discretion is if it's a big level, there's nothing wrong with just waving a candle or waving a couple of candlesticks. Just see how it develops. You know, we're looking to see, you know, if there's a nice reversal pattern forming, you know, like a tweezer top, bearish engulfing pattern, anything like that. Um, we're looking to see what the RSI does. You know, we can see classically there's a bit of divergence in the chart there. Now, I'm not necessarily saying we would use that to stop us from trading, but the fact is, you know, we weigh these rules up. So, you know, we have our support and resistance. That tells us we're on a level. That tells me I shouldn't be entering into the trade. OK, we then move to the next example. OK, we then have RSI. Now, we can see some divergence in the RSI. That's, um, you know, potentially a negative. And we also see that as well as that, we are in a ranging market. And as we already know, guys, when a, range, uh, when a market is ranging, the oscillator will generally bounce off, OK, that 70 level or off that 30 level. So for me, you know, I look at the chart. I've got my buy signal. I see this resistance level. I see my RSI. I think to myself, oh, the RSI is around 70. Now, a little tip for you guys when it comes to using RSI, it's something I always use. OK, the 70 level is not the true gauge when a market is trending. OK, what you should be doing. Um, and again, it's not a recommendation. It's just what I do is always look to see what the actual true resistance level is. OK, and if we actually have a little look in this euro dollar, for example, uh, we can see that the 70 level get broken lots and lots of times. But actually, if we scroll along and we just use a little bit of discretion, we can see that, you know, the high is generally around 85. It's a level that we, we very rarely break off, maybe even a little bit lower. We never break above it. It's the genuine um, sort of ceiling that we see in the market. OK, so with me, when I look at this uh, and pop back to the slides here and we have a little look, you know, I see that we're at 70. Now, if we've been in a big trend, that would say to me, you know, well, actually, potentially there is room for an upside. And I would happily have been long. But the fact that we look like we're ranging, you know, the fact we've got this resistance level, the fact that we've got a bit of divergence and the fact that we've got the RSI at 70 in a ranging market, that kind of tells me that I'm not really um, too keen on trading this with, you know, a 2% risk. OK, as well as this, guys, another little tip for you. If the SAR is failing to make these steep, steep moves that we see, that's telling us um, that basically we're in a range of market. Look, we've got lots and lots of very low gradient um, SAR, SAR arrows here. And that's telling us that we're pretty much trading sideways. So in that case, what we should be doing is, you know, understanding we're in a range in market and risking accordingly. If you do want to take the trade, you can take the trade, you know, and, you know, you may decide to take um, maybe half a percent. Maybe you want to risk one percent. But generally speaking, as a mechanical system, there's no way I'd be risking 2% on that like a mechanical system would because there are just a few things. Now, these don't all have to line up. For example, if we had got a nice resistance level, my RSI had been sort of around that 50 level um, and, you know, the SAR had clearly been in a trend. That would have probably said to me, well, there's a good chance we're going to potentially test higher. Maybe I will risk maybe 1%. OK, there's no definitive. You will have rules for how much you risk, max rules and, and where you exit out of the trade and so on and so forth. But you will not basically um, be committed to having to put the trade on. OK, that's uh, something uh, I trade every session possible. Um, for example, I'll be trading the Asian session tomorrow on the back of uh, New Zealand Forex Gal. Uh, New Zealand rate announcement tomorrow, guys, very important. So let's move on. OK, so again, volume, very, very important. Look to see a volume. You know, when you have a breakout from a level, if you get a buy signal, you want to see a nice spike up in volume. OK, um, because, you know, generally speaking, um, it doesn't have to be higher than the prior candle. But generally, if it's above the average if it's the point, it will help you um, to make the decision that this is a true breakout. In this example, actually, the volume wasn't that great. It's actually the one here. And, um, you know, it's another reason why potentially you would not look to put the trade on or if you put the trade on, you would use very little um, size. OK, so there's another thing, guys, with discretion. How many of you guys have ever put a trade on and been stopped out? Because profit targets and stop losses are very, very um, much another thing that can actually um, be aided by discretion. OK, 
absolutely forex girl says she has. I, I can't tell you the number of times that i've been in a trade it's looking brilliant and then it comes all the way back stops me out and then carries on going it's to do with the herd mentality guys so when you see a level everyone else sees a level if you have a mechanical strategy you will have a profit target of x amount of pips or when an oscillator hits a certain level or when you know a trend tool hits a certain level or when something happens you get out of the trade it's not the best way to be in my opinion OK, herd mentality for your profit target. Wait to see what the market is doing. OK, and there are a few points that we can make from the chart. Initially, when you enter into the trade, OK, and we look at this blue area on the chart here, we can see the black line um, here is pretty much um, our sort of resistance level um, on the short term. OK, but our actual resistance level is this sort of orange area on the chart. OK, we can see we have a nice resistance level. OK, and that resistance level gets broken. OK, now, generally speaking, when it comes to trading, that is a great breakout trade. I'm sure our RSI, I'm sure our volume, I'm sure our other, other indicators have told us to actually put the trade on. But when it comes to actually putting the trade on, you know, be aware of what other traders are thinking. OK, we break our level, we break our resistance zone. OK. We can see that generally, and it's just my opinion, most traders will be resting their stop loss at a certain level. And generally, they'll use a support and resistance level. OK. What I would say to you guys is use a bit of sort of intuition. OK, because generally speaking, if you've seen a level, everyone has seen a level. OK, we can see that the red line generally stop losses would have been placed around this area here. It's actually one I traded. I did see it. OK, and what's happened is price has gone up. We've seen a doji. Now, if you have not hit your profit target at this point, guys, OK, a mechanical system won't care. Say that we have a 100 pip profit target or we have a particular rule that says we get out. A mechanical strategy, you won't exit the trade. OK, however, with a bit of discretion, we can see that straight away, without even using other support tools, we have a very, very big shooting star there form guys and next to it we have a very big rejection candle so for me you know a discretionary trader would use this price action and they would probably cut out some of the position okay where do i get my volume um generally uh, you can use metatrader it's not a true representation of volume but it does do the job um level two data you can use uh, a number of sites but generally, you know, the best level two data comes from places like uh, M&I uh, flows and things like this. Um, I use something called Trading Technologies, um, which is actually a DMA system. Um, but MetaTrader volume is actually not too bad for, for watching the, the actual volume itself. So, guys, you know, discretion. We have a shooting star here for I'd cut the trading. The mechanical system wouldn't cut any of that position. OK, um, as well as this, we can see, you know, everyone's stop losses are probably around this area. OK, use discretion. Just put it a little bit further away. Look for the next level along, guys, because, you know, what will happen is um, the market will spike down there. People will get stopped out. Everyone will have their sell orders here. It spikes through and then, you know, we start to move higher. It comes down again, stops everyone out and begins to move again. And then obviously we come off afterwards. By that point, hopefully, though, we would have made a nice um, profit in the market. OK, the um, double side will be a prime example of this, guys. OK, so that's a basic int introduction for discretion in trading. What I thought is a very, very good way of doing um, an exercise to show this. OK, we're having a little bit of competition, guys. I need two volunteers. First two to give me a plus in the box um, will be those volunteers. There is a small prize up for grabs. OK, and it is basically designed to show you how discretion can affect results in trading. It's something that I always, always teach. OK, so two volunteers. I'm hoping there will be two people. Maybe FX Boyke, you'd like to have a go? Forex girl? You've got to do very, very little. You've just got to put a plus and minus in the box uh, when it comes to um, putting, putting um, a mythical trade on. Anybody? No one wants to take part? OK, so Joe Zepp's in there, Darren's in there. OK, good. Right, fine. So basically, guys, what we do is we take a random chart. OK, I've, I've picked up a chart already. I've pre-prepared the chart. OK, just for the sake of time. OK, we're using the double SAR strategy, guys. So you understand the concept of the double SAR. And if you don't, it's fine because I'm going to basically tell you when you get a buy and sell signal. 
And what I want you guys to do is look on the chart and basically say to me when you want to uh, enter the trade. And within reason, we're not going to, you know, say you enter the trade 20 candles after the signals given, because generally that's what we do in trading. But the idea is, guys, you've got a bit of discretion. OK, we'll place our stop loss in the, in the uh, normal place um, and you can decide when you enter, if you even want to enter and when you want to exit the trade. So um, to make it a little bit more realistic and bring a bit of game theory in and to also bring in um, sort of the psychology aspect, there is a prize up for grabs, guys. Um, there will be a strategy evaluation, a full strategy evaluation done by me. Um, you will have to do it on the Gmail side, but I can PM you the details at the end. But there is a twist. You have to beat the EA. OK, so we have a system here. OK, so basically the EA will trade every single OK trade. OK, I can see that we have got Darren and we have got Joe. OK, now it's just a quick game. It won't take very long. Um, obviously, over a longer period, we get different results. But basically, guys, we can see that on the chart here. OK, at this point, we have got a sell signal. OK, we can see that we have an orange longer term direction. So is above market that tells us to get short um, only trades. And then we have a nice little dot here, which reverses and gives us a sell trade. OK, the EA will be taking the trade on because it always takes the trade on. Uh, my question to you guys is, would you like to enter into a short trade or would you like to hold? Is there anything on the chart that tells you maybe not to enter into the trade? OK, so Joe doesn't want in. Darren wants in. So straight away, we can see um, we can see that basically there is a little bit of discretion. OK, coming through. OK, and I'm also in for this. So I will not enter the trade, I don't think. Um, and basically, guys, the reason I'm not entering the trade is, again, um, we're heading towards that 30 level. Um, the volume is pretty good on the sell. But there is a little bit of a support reason that, reason that I've seen on the chart here. Um, I'd rather maybe wait a candle. OK, so you guys have entered into the trade. The EA is into the trade and basically our stop loss is placed above. Board. So we'll move along a couple of candles and then you can decide that you want to hold the trade. So we move lower. Everyone happy? Just give me a plus or minus if you want to uh, plus if you want to hold the trade. OK, Darren's in. Joe's. Um, Joe is actually. You're, are you in? Are you, you're not in the trade, are you, Joe? So. Pittman. OK, so it's only uh, Darren in the trade, actually. So that's a good point. <laughs> so I'm in the trade. I'm holding it. We've had a break of the support level. I'm going to actually enter into the trade now. So, you know, at this point, I'm in. And basically what we can see here is obviously straight away, I've got not a great entry level, to be fair. I will mark myself up in blue. So I'm a bit different. OK, and we carry on. OK. We can see that we get a bit of a uh, inverted hanging man here, a bit of a reversal signal. Have to hold the trade. Darren's in. Joe's obviously not. OK, we get a reversal. So I'm going to be very nice to you. Um, Darren, you're obviously in the trade. And we can basically see that at this point, if you like, I'm going to let you. I'll let you take the one pip. I'll let you take the one pip. Now, the EA is just going to hold the trade. It continues to track its stop loss, obviously, with our little blue uh, number here. Would you like to hold the trade, Darren? Still in short, so he's not getting out. Good, the EA still in short. At this point, um, I'm just going to hold the trade. Okay, price moves up. Okay, so at this point, you can probably take a two and a half pip loss if you like. I'm going to be taking a, probably a uh, three or four pip loss at this point. And at this point, I'm going to be exiting the trade. Okay, and I'm now down minus three pips. Okay, the reason I'm exiting the trade is we've had a clear bounce off this support zone on the chart. OK, and I bounced off that overbought and some pretty good volume in, the, in there at that point. So Darren's still in. He's still holding it. We move along um, and it moves down. So at this point, we actually move down a little bit and then we get a nice bullish engulfing pattern on the body. OK, what do you want to do now, Darren? You still in? Bear in mind the EA is still in. I presume he's still in there by the fact that he's still, still in. So he's still in. Price moves up, moves down moves up and we're building a very very nice support level here okay so it sort of supports why you maybe do not want to hold the trade we're clearly in a range of market what about now then darren <laughs> dale unfortunately you're not in on this one i'm afraid it is um it is just for the uh two guys the first two 
So still in. Okay, so Darren is um, still in. He's holding the trade. We move along. Okay, straight away we move up. Okay, we're moving down, and then we have a breakout. Now at this point, EA is obviously in. Okay, I've been out. I've lost a little bit on down three pips. Okay, we can see we move down. RSI at the thirty level. What are you looking to do? You're looking to hold the trade there, Darren. Still want to hold the trade. Still in. We've got someone who wants to hold the trade forever. I think so. That's about a thirteen pip winner. We carry on moving. We get a nice hammer pattern. Now we can see that we've got a bit of divergence taking place in the market. Um, if I had actually been in the trade, I probably would exit. Now, um, at the moment, you know, our stop loss is above here. What are you thinking? In or out? Just give us a plus or minus. And it is something I do like to spend a bit of time. We spend like half an hour on this usually, but it's just a quick exercise. The EA is still in until the end, until it reverses. So it's up to you, Darren. So a bit of game theory here, basically. Uh, you need to beat the EA to win the prize. To win that strategy evaluation, so you have a choice. So he's in. Uh, he doesn't want out. Okay, so we begin to move lower. The EA is still in. And at this point, guys, we can see that obviously the EA and Darren are both on side. And then at this point, with nice reversal, again we get a nice bit of a bearish engulfing day. Volumes coming down a little bit, but it is during the uh, European session. Still in. We move down. We move up. OK, and our stop loss now is obviously down here. So at this point, if you like, Darren, you can take. I would say a 13 pip winner. And risk that the EA is going to obviously hold the trade longer. What are you thinking? Now, bearing in mind, you have to win. So you have to beat the EA. OK, if you get if you both get the same pip, it's a tie. And we roll the prize over to our next session in the uh, trading room. So you're staying in. OK, we begin to move down and there you are, stopped out. OK, so both Darren and the EA are stopped out there. That's a bit unfortunate. OK, about 10 pips because you do get a re-entry signal potentially. Then let's have a look what happens. It does move up. So basically, both of you guys have made uh, a profitable trade there. Now, generally, say you're both plus sort of around 10, we'll say now when you're plus 10, um, unfortunately, uh, Joe, I believe, you are zero and I am minus three. Now, guys, we are near the end of the session, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do another round. But generally, we play this for sort of, um, you know, 20 minutes in our, in our, in our sessions. And what, what it finds is you will very much find that people will, um, react differently. For example, you have guys who will not put a trade on because they just want to take one trade because they want to, um, you know, uh, win a bit. OK, want to win the competition. They take a little bit of profit. Um, and it's very, very similar to the psychology that you find in trading. Um, if you wanted DEA to take profit and then hold for one more bar. <laughs> That's an interesting um, game theory that you've got there, actually. Um, Darren. But you find that over a series of time, we've got one guy who actually the record was a minus 129 pips. But yet he still beat the EA. The EA was minus 140. I mean, I was down about 14 and we had a couple of other guys who were up sort of 30 and four pips. And over a quick series of time, you should just play the game, guys, amongst yourselves. Over a series of time, you will find that, you know, the discretion side of things um, will impact your profitability. Straight away, it's been a big negative there. I've lost money. The EA's made money. But over a longer period of time, I am confident that I would make money more than if I was trading a mechanical strategy. OK, guys, so we're pretty much at the end of the session. Um, obviously, like to thank FX Street and uh, everyone for attending. Um, got some time for some questions, guys. So if you've got any questions, pop them into the box. Um, as well as that, guys, obviously, you know, you can find all of our lessons on Tradimo, uh, dot com, And This is where I do the majority of my, my stuff or all of my stuff. Um, we have a nice education there. So if you're looking to find anything um, out about technical analysis, psychology, very, very nice section there. Some mechanical strategies to build on and so on and so forth. Find it here, guys. As well as this, we do have our trading room uh, pretty much open nine till nine. If you look at the schedule, um, you will see we have, um, you know, I do the morning prep. The focus is on basically prepping the morning, getting our sentiment, getting ourselves some trade setups. And then obviously, as we move through the day, we move into um, education mode where we teach things. And generally, our end of week prompts are on the, on the Friday. Um, if we actually pop onto our offers and promotions, you'll see lots of, uh, lots of offers. There's even a free 100 euro capital for you guys. Um, and 
obviously the trading room there guys is is something that we do a lot of learning in it's 99 dollars a month and you can sign up for a seven day free trial so you can come and join us in our competition hopefully and if you actually pop back to the home page you'll see that we do have lots of courses as well uh, things like misconceptions commitment of traders are very technical um um way of trading and lots and lots on offer guys so you know check out the site check out our education um it is it is second to none in my opinion um but right now guys i am probably um, going to shoot um with the exception obviously of a couple of questions so entry or exit best for discretion or does it matter i'm an exit discretion trader um i am an entry um, management and exit now i'm not saying it always works perfectly for me darren but generally speaking I'm a big, big, big entry exit and uh, across the whole board. If we just get rid of this here, for example, you know, um, for me, if I'm trading, say that let's hypothetically say that we were in a uh, short trade, we get a nice bearish engulfing pattern, a uh, big, big spike in volume. We begin to move down. Now, for me, you know, I can see straight away there's a little bit of divergence occurring in the market. We've got lots and lots of hammers. We've got lots of flaws being uh, formed and we begin to form a range, a bit of a consolidation. So for me, you know, when I get sort of a rejection like this and a rejection like this or three rejections like this, there's no harm. I'll take a little bit of profit off and it will depend on sort of how far I'm on side and so on and so forth. Um, likewise, I will also re-enter um, that position. So, you know, say I was short and I've taken a little bit of profit off here. We can see quite clearly that there is actually a uh, nice shooting start and it forms part of our consolidation pattern, which is obviously bearish after a big move down. You know, I'll probably actually re-enter half of that position that I've got out of or even re-enter the whole lot and have a better average. Um, so there's lots and lots of different things. Um, in the trading room itself, we do have um, um, a signal service we are working on. But generally, we pretty much um, prefer to, um, you know, for, focus on the education and help you with the sentiment. But yes, we do have certain trade setups in there. Um, we're actually up 12 percent in our first week when we tested it out. Do I trade five minutes? No, I trade everything. Uh, long term trade at the moment. I'm short gold from April of last year, 1480. Um, still holding some of it. So I trade pretty much everything. Right, guys. I uh, think we're going to have to shoot now. Um, it is pretty much the end of the session. Um, I don't want to obviously get in trouble by the guys at FX Street. <laughs> Smiley face. Um, so thank you all for attending. Um, we will be obviously having another session very very soon um i will obviously look at what you guys would like as a session i do attend some of the other sessions so it'd be interesting uh, to see what we can do then maybe we look at some psychology to develop this discretion side of things um thank you all for attending i hope you have a lovely day and i look forward to seeing you on tradimo position trading absolutely i do like um position trading thanks a lot guys bye-bye